Hey everyone and welcome back. So this will be another quick fire tutorial on uh, some concepts around more UMG stuff. And this time I wanted to look at keyboard and gamepad based key bindings. Before getting into this, there are a lot of other tutorials already out there which show you how to manually set up a store in an array, all of the buttons that you have and toggle through them. So this isn't gonna be another one of those. Um, I actually want to show a simpler way to do this. It doesn't give you quite as much freedom. You can't do things like looping from the bottom button back up to the top when you've reached the end of an array. But this is using the built-in functionality that Unreal provides that people just seem to not use or be aware of. So I just wanted to bring that to attention. And also because I find that this is a very easy sort of quick file way to build a menu. If you want things like a, a quick menu system for a game jam or something, it's a lot more convenient to do this than it is to set everything up in, like I mentioned, the array and needing to store everything. And every time you create a new a new button, working out where to place that, and if you wanted buttons lined up beside each other as well as top to bottom, then you're gonna have problems with that. So this should hopefully get past those issues. So before we get into this, just a quick example of the kind of thing we'll be making. It's gonna be this very simple menu system. We can navigate this with the mouse to swap between the buttons. We can also use the keyboard. So this is the keyboard activating it at the moment. And then it also has automatic support for the gamepad using the D-pad or the analog sticks. And pressing the A button there is going to set the button, same as the enter or space. And uh, we've also got a quit function again using enter there to use the buttons. So this is going to have full default support for any keyboard and gamepad as well as the standard mouse click option that you're used to. So to begin with, what we're going to do is we're going to get the slightly less important things out of the way. So all I have here is an empty project, no starter contents needed, and I'm just going to create a new folder and call this one Blueprints. Next, I'm just going to create the Blueprints, which will help us show and manage the, the flow of this project. So if we begin by creating just a simple game mode, and we'll call this BP underscore game mode, and I'll create another one, and this is going to be of type player controller, so BP underscore player controller. And I'm also going to create our widget. So we'll go down to the user interface and create our widget. And we'll just call this one WBP underscore menu. Okay, so for now, this is going to be the main things we want. Uh, we'll also want a button a little bit later, but we'll go and create that one as and when we need it. And to begin with, though, I'm just going to go into the game mode. And I will assign our default game controller or player controller to be our BP player controller. Compile and save that. And make sure that we set this up in the maps and modes just so that we don't need to worry about this again. So we now have our player controller as the default. And then inside of this, I'm just going to start dragging these tabs up. We just want to go to the player controller's event begin play, and we'll spawn the widget that we've just created. So we're going to create the widget. We will pass in the menu that we've just created. We will add this to viewport. And we also want two other things. So the reason that I've specifically created a player controller when we probably didn't need to otherwise is just because I want to have some control over the input mode. So the first thing is inside of the player controller, we're going to set the input mode to UI only. So if we just type UI only, we'll get this option. And the player controller, because we're doing this in a player controller, we can just say self. And then again, we want to set the Boolean inside of this player controller to show mouse cursor. So we'll set show mouse cursor and we'll set that to be true, just so that we instantly have interaction with our menu. So if we press play now, we should see that Regardless of whether or not we press into the window, we have the mouse cursor showing. So we know that we're using our game mode and the correct controller. So it just means we don't need to worry about this now and we can focus just on the menu setup. Okay, so if we open the WBP underscore menu, there's a few things we want to add. So I'm just going to do this with two buttons. You can add extra if you wanted, but we're just going to keep this nice and simple so that we can get this done. Now, before we add these buttons, we can go in and add a normal button. This does mean that we'd have to do a lot of logic and we'd need to check all of the buttons constantly inside of the event graph in the uh, the graph and the event tick and that's something i wanted to avoid as well so i've really really tried simplifying this so what we're going to do is in the blueprints we're going to create a new blueprint class again uh, we need to drop down all classes and we need to find the class button so if you haven't done this before or if you're not aware of this you can just recreate buttons um, as in the user interface class type of button from scratch you don't need to just use the ones which are provided in the ui interface if you haven't done that before i have done another video on this and the pros and cons of using that uh, mostly the pros just because it really speeds up the process of creating menu systems and it helps you to really quickly make single changes and have that populate across an entire setup for your widgets and you can do this for anything you can do this for text renderers you can do this for backgrounds and things like that so we're going to create a button of our own, and I'm just going to call this one BP underscore button. And if we make sure we save this, if we go back into the widget now, then what we want to do is we can see if we hit compile, 
uh, we, we have access to our BP button that we've just made. So if you wanted, quite simply, the benefits of this is that you can come in, you can make all of these changes once inside of your new button class, and regardless of what you do inside of the widget then, all of these buttons showing the same class would update, whereas obviously if you're just using the standard button, then you're going to have to update all of these individually if you need to make any changes. The reason that we're using this though is that we're going to house some logic inside of the button class, which is going to constantly check whether or not it is the current button which is in focus. And if it is, depending on the result, we're going to change the style of the button so that we have this quick update depending on whether or not it's focused by the keyboard, the gamepad or the mouse. Before we do that though, I just want to set these up. So I'm just going to keep one of these in, delete the other one, call this one um, button start and I'll give this some text. So we'll drag some text on, I'll give this a size of 300 by 150 or maybe 100. I'm not going to worry about the visual aspect of the button at the moment because this is all going to be updated in the button logic later, so leave this as standard. But I will set the anchor point to the middle, put the alignment to 0.5 on these, and put the X position to zero, and maybe minus 100 on the Y. With that done, I'm going to change the text a little bit as well, so I tend to change the font to light, and just give the text a slightly darker color because the buttons will be lighter a little bit later, and change the first bit of text to say start. Okay, so that's button one complete. With that done, if you control and select both of these, press control C, select the panel to control paste or copy paste control V, the second button in, and I'm just gonna rename this one button quit. Change the text on this one to say quit and just center the button a bit more. So it's got the anchor points correct. We just need the X position to be zero and the Y we can make this 100 to give it a 100 gap as well. So these are the buttons set up and what we want to do now is we can come back in, we can test these as they're appearing. So we currently have control with the mouse, which is gonna work perfectly fine. We wouldn't have control at the moment with the mouse and keyboard unless you've already clicked into it like you, like you can see that I did there. Otherwise, we don't have that control. If we click in, then you can see we get this outline, which shows that the keyboard is taking effect. So before adding the functionality to our BP underscore button, we're just gonna to go to the graph of the widget. And this is the really quick way that you can add the focus to the keyboard and the gamepad that I mentioned. So off of the event construct, we'll get rid of the pre-construct. Uh, what we want to do is we want to set keyboard focus. And this is something I just don't see people use for some reason. And what we can do with this is we can pass in the start button to be our first keyboard focus. So now if we press play, we can see that we can actually use the keyboard straight away, which previously we wouldn't have been able to have done. So that's the first step. But the problem is, is that if we click off of this, then we lose that focus again if we hit the background or anything. So we're going to fix that a bit later as well. Now, just to make sure that we have these working properly, we're going to set up the on clicked for the quit button. And we're just going to call the quit game. So we'll call the quit game function and let that exit. And we'll do the same for the start. Um, I'll probably just do a print string for this. So on clicked start, we'll do a print string and we'll just say start game. Okay, so very simple logic, just to make sure that we can prove and test that they're working. So if we click on start, then we have start game showing. If we hit enter, then we have start game and the same for space. And that's the other thing to keep in mind, the way that I'm doing this, it does mean that there are default buttons for the UI. Uh, for gamepads, it's gonna be A or X on the PlayStation and A on the Xbox controller. For mouse and keyboard, the default select button is space and enter and up and down for the navigation and left and right arrows. Does mean you won't be able to use uh, W, A, S and D. That's something you'd need to implement manually. But again, that, that's what I'm trying to avoid is that manual setup for menu specific stuff. We can get rid of the event tick. Uh, that's the other great thing about this is we're not gonna need to do anything in the event tick here. So this does mean we now need to start going back to our buttons. Now, before we do anything else, what I want to do is I'm going to get one of our buttons. We'll get the quit button and the start button. So we'll control drag both of these in. And off one of these, I'll choose the start one to begin with. I'm gonna pull off of here and make an array. I'm gonna add another pin and put the quit button in. And then we're gonna pull off and promote this to a variable. And we'll just call this the button array. So I did say that we wouldn't be traversing or navigating through the buttons using an array, but an array will still be useful and save us a bit of time. So we still need this just so that we can call some functions in these a little bit later. We won't hook this back up yet. We're gonna move over to the BP underscore button now. I'm gonna start doing some of that logic for the button specific stuff. Now, the first thing I want is three variables and these are gonna be of type button style. The first one I'm gonna call mouse style. So these will be the styles that we're swapping between depending on whether the mouse is hovering over it, whether we are focused or not focused on the gamepad or keyboard. 
we'll create one of these and we will call get the type button style and see here we have button style and if we hit compile we can see that we get the standard options for whether this is uh, in its normal state hovered or pressed now before we edit this i'm just going to control w this twice rename the second one to key not selected and key selected probably not the best names for these but uh, i don't really know what to call these and what we're going to do from here is we'll set these up now so when we are in the mouse style so when the mouse is hovering over this button i'm going to leave the normal as it is i'm going to give it the hovered state a slight tint so that we know what the uh, that something's happened and when it's been pressed i'm going to give this a, a darker tint as well to show that we've clicked on this just so that we know what each of the states are so that should be fine and for speed just because i'm not too worried about how all of these look uh, when the key isn't selected i want all of these to stay white so when we don't have a key pressed on it or when the basically when this is focused check hasn't been made on this we want this to stay white which is going to be the normal state for the mouse as well and then when it has been selected what we want to do is i'm going to copy the hovered color just so that we use the same color for all of these so so again if you're not aware of this another uh, shortcut tip is to right click you can copy the whole style that you have here i'm going to go back to the key selected and on normal we're going to paste that style we can see that we get that same blue and we can paste that style here as well and then again, when this is pressed, I'm going to go back and copy the pressed from the mouse style. And we're going to set that for pressed on the key style as well. So we'll paste that in just to make sure we get the same hex values. And obviously, if you had textures or buttons that you wanted to be copied across, that would copy the images and fill those as well. So another really quick way to get uh, multiple styles updated and keep the same settings rather than doing it manually by hand. So these are the styles of setup that we need to use. The next thing we want to do is in the event graph or in fact we need to create some functions uh, one problem with this using the buttons and housing the logic here is that we can't have things like event ticks and we don't have an event begin place so if we tried getting those in in the event graph here we wouldn't have access to those so what we're going to do quite simply i'm going to create one function called start and when this is called we're going to call a function by timer so we're going to set a timer by function name and this function name i'm just going to call check focus now you can play about this. I'm going to make the time actually uh, relatively low. So 0.1 in between each time this is called. And we'll set this to looping. So this is kind of making our own event tick. And if you remember that a normal event tick is something like 0.008 seconds between each call. So this is going to be a, a little bit more efficient as well. And not quite as processor intensive as if in comparison to if you would do it on the event tick inside of the actual widget. So you can come back if you find that's not responsive enough, though, you can come back and you can make this something smaller like the um, the event tick time duration there. But for now, I'm just going to leave this as 0.1. So if we come in and copy the function name to make sure we don't misspell this, create a new function and paste the check focus in. What we want to do in this function is pull off here. We'll get a branch check and we want to find out whether or not the mouse is currently hovering. And there's a built in function for this so we we'll just or built in check. So we'll just find the is hovered boolean. So we'll find out whether this widget is currently hovered. If it is, then this is the button that we want to be currently focused. So we'll set keyboard focus and we'll set the style because we know that this is hovered by the mouse. This is only called when the mouse enters this button. We want to set the style. So set style and we'll set this to be our mouse style. And just so this makes sense, what we're changing here is on the class defaults, we have the standard style options that we have for any other button. And it's just going to change this to be the one that we're selecting. And this is why I said not to worry about overriding things like getting rid of the horrible gradient texture that's provided by default, uh, because we're going to do that by using these styles over here. So we can skip that stage, which is always great. So that is the mouse possibility accounted for what we want to do then is if that isn't the case so if this doesn't currently if this button doesn't currently have the mouse hovering over it then we will set the style again and this time we're going to use a select node so pull off of this and get a selector and we want to find out whether or not this has keyboard focus this time and again there's another boolean check for this uh, which is has keyboard focus now if that is true then we want the key selected style to be chosen if not then we want the key not selected style to be chosen so quite simple really and then depending on whether or not this is uh, focused with the keyboard or the mouse we now have all of our states accounted for so if we compile this and press save i think this should work now pretty much straight away uh, the only thing we want to do is go back to the widget blueprint this is why we have this array here um, as i said we're not going to be toggling through this but this does allow us to call our start function that we've made so we're going to pull off and do a for each loop so we'll do our for each loop here and plug in the execution pin 
And for each element in this array, all we want to do is call the start function, just to let the, the button know that it needs to start checking whether or not it's hovered. And then from here, we can set the initial keyboard focus to be whichever button you think would be best to be your initial focused button. So now there's one more thing I know we need to change, but we're just going to make sure that this, that this works. So we can see that the buttons have indeed been updated. So we have this kind of more modern flat style going. Um, if I was to hover my mouse over these, then we're getting these updated. And I can use the keyboard to make those changes. And I've also just grabbed my gamepad and I'm using the left analog stick or the D-pad. And A key is uh, pressing the start button. We can see that stupid Windows thing wants to get involved. And also if I come back in and select one of the buttons, then I get the quit button as well. So all of this is now working with keyboard, mouse and gamepad. So the final thing to do is you'll notice that if we come in and actually use the keyboard, we're getting this weird outline and we can remove that quite easily by coming into the project settings. We'll go to the user interface and we want this render focus rule. Uh, we want this to be never. So that's what was, that was doing, it's rendering the, the focus lines. So if we come back in now, select again, we can see that they've gone away. And that leaves that one final problem that I mentioned. And that is that this works fine unless you click off the buttons and then you can't get back in with the mouse and keyboard without pressing a button to begin with. So we're going to come in and make one final change. So inside of the WBP underscore menu, we'll come in, we'll create one more button. We're going to drag this anywhere. I want to place this above all of the other buttons. So drag that up on the canvas layer option and set the anchor point to be the full screen. We'll zero out the offset for the left, right and center and the bottom. So this covers the whole of the background. And then under the styles, I just want to quite simply set the opacity down to nothing. So I've done that on the normal layer. I'm going to copy this and paste this for the hovered and the pressed so it never looks any different. And then inside of the graph, first of all, actually, I'm going to go back and I'll rename this to uh, button background or button BG. And then with button BG ready, I'm going to press the on clicked option. And when this is clicked, quite simply, I'm going to copy this down. So I can control W the set focus to start and that will just return the focus as it was. So when you click off now, you get the keyboard back on the start button at the very least. And again, that's going to work for the gamepad as well. But we now have full support of mouse, keyboard and gamepad. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, this does mean as well that we can just come in and copy more buttons around now if we wanted. And as long as we add it to the initial array, just so that the function gets called, we don't need to worry about having logic updates for which one to call next, which one was last, storing the previous and next buttons and so on, like you've seen in other tutorials. As I said, it does have a certain drawback where uh, you can only go down and up. Other people have added logic way. If you're at the bottom, then it will loop around to the top button, uh, things like that. So it is slightly less flexible in some ways, but we can. I think the great thing about this is that it's all kind of self-contained under this button logic. Uh, so each individual button manages whether or not it is highlighted, and then the widget itself is left a lot cleaner. So it's just one of many ways you can probably set up a keyboard and gamepad ready menu system. Like I mentioned, the main goal of this was just to show an alternative way that I haven't seen shown anywhere else. And I think is a little bit faster, especially for concepting, prototyping, or if you just need the menu to be a little bit more universal, but you didn't need it to have very specific control over which button is next in the order. If you did want to see that kind of thing, I'd recommend there's a community led training by uh, Celeste. And that is definitely one of the, the best examples I've seen of getting uh, quite functional and interesting logic into a gamepad keyboard style uh, menu system. So I'll leave this one here for today though. As always, if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the content coming from any of the playlists on this channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.